Iran's latest offer on its nuclear activities has been greeted with a good degree of skepticism by Western powers. Is Tehran seeking real compromise on this issue, or is it just buying time? This is Inside Story. Hello there, I'm Nick Clark. Waiting for a definite answer from Iran, President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad indicates he's willing to accept a deal offered by the International Atomic Energy Agency, that's the IAEA. The deal was put together by the US, the UK, Russia, China, France and Germany, and that was in October last year. And it requires Iran to send about 70% of its low enriched uranium to Russia and France, where it would be processed into fuel for a research reactor. The U.S. and its allies fear Iran is trying to develop nuclear weapons. The deal would pretty much prevent them from doing so. Iran, of course, insists its nuclear program is entirely peaceful. For months, Tehran criticized the deal and tried to renegotiate the terms. That was rejected by the West. But now it seems Iran could be changing its stance. Ahmadinejad saying his government has no problem with the deal. Some people made a fuss about it, but there's no problem. We will seal the contract and we'll give you the 3.5% uranium to enrich the 20% level and in four or five months return it to us. We will seal a contract. Some people say that will not happen. They will not return it. But I said we are producing it anyway. And even if they don't return it, what will happen? Well, most welcomed Iran's move, but skepticism did reign. Assistant Secretary of State for Public Affairs P.J. Crowley said it was unclear what Ahmadinejad was offering, and they're waiting for an official response. You know, we will uh, look forward to, uh, uh, to hearing uh, about the Iranian position through the IAEA. Um, so, uh, but it's not, you know, we, I, I think we're just seeking, you know, clarification uh, through the IAEA as to whether Tehran has changed its current position. As PJ Crowley, well, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, she echoed similar sentiments and said that words were not enough. We will measure Iran by its actions. If Iran has new proposals, they should be submitted to the IAEA. Words are not a solid base for further steps. What about the uh, French Foreign Minister, Bernard Kouchner? He uh, mints no words. He's certainly not convinced with Iran's offer. I do not see an official response sent to the IAEA. There is none. If I decided, like the Chinese foreign minister, to wait, my interpretation would be that they are allowing us to gain time while they are wasting it. Well, the Chinese foreign minister, he seemed relatively positive. He called for continued negotiations with Iran with the aim of finding a diplomatic solution. I think that the urgency is to discuss these proposals in order to reach a consensus as soon as possible and to solve the Iranian case. So they have a general assorted views from world powers. Uh, to discuss this proposed deal further, we're joined by our guests in Tehran. Syed Mohammed Morandi, he's the head of North American Studies at Tehran University. In Washington, D.C., Patrick Clawson, deputy director for research at the Washington Institute, where he also directs the Iran Security Initiative. And in Moscow, Pavel Felgenhauer, he's an independent defense analyst and columnist. Gentlemen, welcome all. We appreciate your time and uh, thanks Thank for appearing on this program. Uh, Mr. Morandi, if we could start with you, sir, in Tehran. Uh, we have a verbal commitment, it seems. Do you think the president's words will translate into a concrete offer to the IAEA? Well, there is an offer there. I think that uh, the Iranians haven't changed their policy but they are trying to be as flexible as possible to keep the ball in the, firmly in the American court. Uh, from the very start, the Iranians never officially said exactly how this exchange of, of uh, uranium at 3.5 percent and uranium at 20 percent should take place, whether it should take place inside or outside the country or in different stages. Uh, the Iranians said that this should be done at the negotiating table, experts should sit down and discuss it and find a solution that is acceptable to all sides, and especially the Iranians, and also th so that the technical issues that may exist may also be resolved so it can be doable. So the Iranians are clearly uh, trying to show uh, that they are willing to negotiate and talk and to find a solution. And, and in fact, you have to keep in mind that the offer in the first place was an Iranian offer. The Iranians said that we, instead of producing our own uranium at 20 percent, uh, we can, in, we will not, we will refrain from 
producing such uranium, and we can bring it in from abroad in order to create a more favorable uh, situation for further negotiations okay. to resolve the issue. But the Americans have, uh, in the eyes of the Iranians, have tried to make this a political issue and tried to intense and create a, a worse situation than before. Well, let's get a, a Washington perspective uh, on what Mr. Morandi is saying there in Tehran. Patrick Clawson, Iran has not changed its policy. It's trying to be as flexible as possible indeed. Well, ever since this issue first got raised by Tehran last summer, uh, the great powers have been very interested in solving this problem. Uh, of how to refuel Iran's research reactor. And uh, Iran does not have the capacity to make the fuel rods. In fact, the United States does not have the capacity to make these fuel rods. There's only two countries in the world that do, that is to say, France and Argentina. So the question is, how are, can we work out some deal? And the outline of this deal has been clear for many, many months. And negotiations were held between technical experts on the, very, the various countries countries involved in Vienna uh, the, uh, under the auspices of the IAEA, and an agreement was worked out in October on the technical aspects of the deal. But unfortunately, then Iran uh, said no to that deal. Well, then there were various proposals made by the IAEA director at the time, Mohammed el Baradai, to address Iran's concerns, but Iran was not interested in proceeding further. If Mr. Ahmadinejad's statement indicates a change, that would be wonderful. Unfortunately, he is not the person who gets to decide this matter, and in the past, he has seemed much more interested in a deal than the, have the people in Iran who actually can decide this matter, such as Iran's supreme leader, Ali Khamenei. Okay, Pavel Felgenhauer, what do you reckon? Do you think this uh, latest overture is serious, is genuine? Uh, well, of course, uh, Russia would be very glad if uh, uh, new punitive sanctions against Iran may, uh, could be avoided. And uh, we would very much here in Moscow wanted to see uh, this proposal by Ahmadinejad to go through and a uh, deal to happen. And at least for the time being, uh, Russia, together with China, uh, would most likely be pressing for more uh, time for Iran to consider, for more time uh, for Iran to reach some kind of agreement, some talks, before any kind of punitive sanctions are uh, really imposed. So, well, okay, so aside Mirandi, we'll get onto the whole issue of sanctions uh, in a second. Um, but we have seen this tactic from Iran before, haven't we? You know, we, we've had this uh, Iran agreeing and then withdrawing and then agreeing again. And, uh, you know, what about this, this point of view that all of this, this latest initiative, if you like, is, is merely a tactic uh, to buy time? Well, that's not true. Iran never changed its position. And I should say that uh, your good guess in Washington's version of history doesn't uh, uh, really seem to be very accurate. The fact is that the Iranians, first of all, can produce in uranium at 20 percent. And it not only can France and uh, Argentina produce it, but so can other countries as well. Argentina and France can produce the sort of 20 percent enriched uranium that is best suitable for the Tehran reactor. But other countries can produce it, and so can Iran. So, uh, but the point, the, the point is that the Iranians, as he admitted, made the offer themselves, whereas the Iranians could have produced enriched uranium at 20 percent. The whole point is that the Iranians are looking for a peaceful solution that is fair to all sides. What the Iranians are looking for is a situation where both sides win, but the Americans seem to be looking for a solution where only the Americans and their allies win. And that is something that just won't work in Iran. The Iranians uh, believe that enriching uranium is a right, and to deny them that right is to deny them their sovereignty. Uh, so does that mean that the Iranians will now go to the IAEA and make a concrete offer along the lines of uh, what the president has been saying in recent days? Well, I think what the Iranians will probably be doing is that because this is a very uh, sophisticated process and the Iranians need this enriched uranium because over 800,000 uh, people who have different illnesses need uh, the Tehran reactor. So it is a sophisticated process. The Iranians will be calling for the five plus one members and in the IEA to sit down and 
discuss and find a way in which this can be done in a way that the Iranians will be satisfied and also in a way that is doable. Uh, the, you know, right now the Iranians have a very bad history with the United States and with France. Uh, the French are holding, the French and the Germans have both uh, signed contracts with Iran with regards to its nuclear program. They have uh, kept uh, Iranian uh, owned uh, material linked to the program in their countries. They've never uh, handed them over to Iran. The United States has passed a, a law to try to prevent Iran from importing gasoline. So when this sort of thing happen, these sort of things happen, it is natural for the Iranians not to have trust, and they have to sit down and be sure that they can trust the other side in this uh, in make, making some sort of agreement. Now, President Ahmadinejad, of course, he, he talked about uh, this issue of five months to turn low enriched uranium into reactor fuel. That falls short of the year-long period that was uh, initially on the table, Patrick Clawson, doesn't it? Um, do you think this is going to be a sticking point? Uh, as and when this comes to the negotiating table? Well, Mr. Morandi in Iran would be well advised to talk with his own country's nuclear engineers because the problem is making fuel rods. Yes, Iran and many countries can make uranium at 20 percent, but there's only two countries in the world that can make the fuel rods for this reactor in Iran. And having 20 percent uranium doesn't do any good unless, for that reactor unless you can make it into fuel rods that go inserted into the reactor. That's what takes the time. There's only two countries that can do this, and that it may make it very hard to meet this five months uh, that uh, Mr. Ahmadinejad was talking about. But uh, it might be possible to do that. Some of the proposals that have been put on the table uh, by countries such as Japan, South Africa, Brazil, Turkey, and Iran has said that it can't trust any of those countries. So that if Iran can't trust any country in the world, then we have to ask ourselves, gee, is the problem that Iran has got difficulties with the United States, or is the problem that the Iran has difficulties with the rest of the world? It's, after all, right now, Turkey and Japan, which have been offering to be the intermediary and to guarantee for uh, Iran, and as I say, other countries like South Africa and Brazil have said that they would play that role if uh, Iran would prefer them. But Iran has turned down all of these offers. Iran has not been able to just a single country in the world which it trusts uh, it's to carry out this deal. That leads some of us to think that what Iran is really doing here is, is stalling and that they really aren't interested in this deal proceeding. Okay, let's put, that to side, Mirandi, words, let's put that to side, Mirandi. Let's put that to side, Mirandi. Iran is stalling. Well, I think uh, Patrick uses the, the, use the term fuel rods quite uh, a few times. Yes, I have discussed this with people, and Iran is quite able, capable of making such fuel rods, as you like to say. Uh, the point, though, and it is not that Iran doesn't trust other countries. Iran doesn't trust the United States. I mean, the Iran knows that the United States has the ability to bully many countries, and it has done so regularly in the past. It's that's basically what the United States has been doing with regards to Iran for over three decades now. The Iranians are pretty intelligent when it comes to American foreign policy and American attitudes towards the country. So it's not an issue of whether Iran trusts other countries. In fact, when you look at the uh, Organization for the Islamic Conference, which consists of over 50 countries, and when you look at NAM, which consists of over uh, of half the countries of the world, you see in all two-thirds of the countries in the world actually support Iran's program through numerous statements that they've been making. So Iran's problem is basically with the United States and a, and a number of its allies, which are powerful countries and which have the ability to bully and push other countries uh, to doing what they want them to do. That is what the Iranians basically fear. They fear that if they give their 3.5% uh, enriched uranium to a neighboring country and then the Americans do not give anything, the 20 percent that Iran needs for its, for its ill people and people with cancer and other, and other ill people in return, then uh, the Iranian government will uh, have some answering do, to do to, its, to the people of Iran. So I think that uh, the people of Iran will be definitely very angry towards the United States. So the Iranian government is saying that we have to find a way forward where the Iranians can trust any deal that is made and that the Iranians can feel sure 
that the people who have cancer next year this time, in a year from now, they will have the medicine that they need in order to survive. And the Iranians okay. know that the Americans do in. not really care all that much about ill Iranians because, if you, as you know, the Americans have refrained countries from giving Iran spare parts for its okay. civilian airliners. All right, let's and bring that's in. why We've a number uh, of airliners Pavel have Falcon fallen Hauer and people have been, been uh, killed out in of this Iran. equation for a little while. So let's, let's bring in uh, Pavel. Um, speaking from Moscow. Uh, what's your view about all of this from a Russian perspective? Uh, Mr. Morandi in Tehran is, is talking very much from a medical perspective about uh, the, the whole nuclear issue in Iran. Is that how you see it in Russia? Uh, well, Russia was very much for this deal. Uh, also, of course, Russia would be technically involved in uh, enriching the uranium from 3.4% to 20%. And Russia would want very much Iran to uh, go forward and show that it's really not uh, intended to make any kind of uh, nuclear uh, military applications and uh, shifting the uh, fuel uh, to Russia and then turning it into fuel rods of 20 percent for the Te Tehran reactor would be a, a demonstration of that. And that would be an agreement with Russian overall policy uh, that the Iranians should act reasonably and then there's no need uh, to have sanctions against Iran. And Russia, of course, would very much want to cooperate with Iran on arms trade, on the nuclear trade, on other issues. But right now, that's in jeopardy because what we see of Iranian, uh, well, unreasonable behavior. Okay, well, you talked about sanctions there, and as Iran considers its way forward, sanctions are, of course, as uh, Babel was talking about there, being considered by the international community. The options are being discussed, and a proposal is indeed being drawn up. Now, the sanctions are likely to expand the list of those people connected uh, to Iran's nuclear industry, ban their travel, plus freeze their assets, and do the same uh, to members of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and companies connected to it. Also could impose restrictions on Iran's central bank, which the West says is a key player in financing Tehran's nuclear and missile programs. It could also target Iran's energy sector, further paralyzing that financially, and a ban on arms import is another option being discussed. Uh, Patrick Clawson, if we have no progress, sanctions apparently, according to some, the only way forward. Will they happen? Would they work? They proved pretty toothless in the past. Well, the sanctions, as you describe them, would be targeted in particular sectors of the, of the Iranian economy. And so there would not be any sanctions on the provision of medicines or medical supplies, such as the nuclear medical material that is produced by Tehran's research reactor. Iran is free to buy that right now from the United States if it wants to. There are no restrictions on the sale of medicines to Iran, including this nuclear medical material. Um, it, the, Instead, the sanctions will be targeted, especially on Iran's nuclear program, to slow down Iran's nuclear program. Iran's nuclear program has many problems. For instance, uh, Mr. Morandi says that Iran can make these fuel rods itself. If so, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. We don't need this deal. Fine. Go ahead and do it. It's because Iran can't, in fact, make certain things that it wants that Iran is uh, uh, trying to buy these items from the rest of the world. And that's what the international community's sanctions will target. They will slow down Iran's nuclear program, which is, in fact, going very, very slowly. Iran has been at this now for 20 years and has not gotten very far. Uh, and recently, uh, Iran's program has slowed down even more. The last IAEA report showed that Iran was not, in, uh, in fact, able to enrich more uranium in the last three months than it had in the previous three months. In other words, the program is at a flat level. And recently, Iran has been complaining about some of its nuclear scientists, which it say uh, the United States has, has captured. Actually, they've taken uh, refuge in other countries. Uh, and there was recently a, a nuclear scientist killed in Iran, which Iran blamed on outsiders. So it appears that Iran's nuclear program is running into problems already. And I think the sanctions will make those problems worse slowing down Iran's program and giving us more time okay. to work out a diplomatic solution. Saeed Sa Mirandi, uh, briefly, if you would, we need to move on. Well, obviously, Iran can make the fuel rods, but it's interesting because um, Patrick's argument is very self-contradictory. On the one hand, Iran is making no progress, and on the other hand, Iran is a major threat. So 
what, what, what do we believe here? It's, I think it's basically a, a, an entrenched hostility towards the Iranian people with regards to the uh, equipment or the medicine that the Iranians need. The Iranians need the fuel rods at 20 percent to produce that medicine. So that is what they should have. And in fact, if we go back to international law, the IAEA is, in accordance to international law, they have to provide Iran with nuclear fuel at 20 percent. Go and look at the regulations in the okay, IAEA Mr. Miranda, and you'll see that. I just want to jump Iran in there because I want to get back to this, I want to get back to this issue of, if, of sanctions. What kind of impact uh, have the sanctions had in the past? And uh, is Iran concerned about the threat of future sanctions? And is that why we're seeing this, uh, this very public appearance by the president talking about the fact that he's prepared to do business? Well, I think uh, it's clear that the sanctions have had an effect, and it's, they have not been directed at the military or at the Iran's nuclear program. They've been directed towards the Iranian people. Uh, they, they've tried to uh, hurt the Iran Iranian banking system so that imports become more difficult, goods that are imported from abroad become more expensive, uh, medical equipment that are imported from other countries, they come in with great difficulty and sometimes are prevented from being brought into the country altogether. It's, uh, it's a fact, and uh, whether Patrick admits it or not, uh, the United States is responsible for that. But the Iranian government is not going to give up its nuclear program or any part of its sovereignty as a result of sanctions or future sanctions. The Iranian position is and has always been reasonable. The Iranians believe that they are working well within their rights as a sovereign nation, but they are willing to give the sort of assurances that other that Western countries believe they need to prove that the program is completely peaceful. Okay, Let, let's move but over to, uh, back to Moscow. If we could move back to Moscow, if we could. Um, Pavel Felgenhauer, what do you think about the threat of sanctions? Do you think that's going to provide the, the impetus that's required to, to enable uh, Iran to cooperate or to make Iran cooperate? No, well, they, of course, uh, would, could be, uh, because right now uh, a, couple, a couple of packages of sanctions were approved. Uh, but now there's talk about so-called punitive sanctions, especially uh, the, uh, focusing on the imports of gasoline, and that could be uh, rather punishing for the Iranian economy. Uh, Russia would not want that happening, but uh, again, for Russia, Iran in itself, of course, is important, uh, but it's only part of the overall picture of Russian-American relations, and Russian attitude toward sanctions is going to be uh, governed by the overall considerations, first and foremost. Uh, right now, our relations with the United States somewhat improved. There's been an agreement in principle on the follow-up nuclear arms uh, treaty. Uh, our president said uh, just a day ago that that Russia needs to improve its uh, uh, climate of investment because without foreign capital we can't restart our economy after the recession. And of course, that climate involves also most likely cooperation with the United States on America and, and the West on uh, the Iranian nuclear issue. But of course, there are other forces in Moscow, those who want to uh, trade arms in, uh, with Iran, those who want to cooperate on nuclear issues with Iran. There are the military and intelligence community that actually would believe that maybe on an anti-American basis they could have some partnership with Iran. So this is going to be discussed in Russia. This is going to be decided. And uh, the overall picture is more important uh, than actually what's going to happen within Iran. We in R Moscow are not afraid at all of the Iranian nuclear pro uh, program. Okay, uh, there, gentlemen, we will have to leave it. You say it's going to be discussed in Russia, it's going to be discussed around the world. It will be discussed on this program again, that's for sure. Uh, thanks, Said Mohammed uh, Morandi, uh, Pavel you. Felgenhauer, and thank you, Patrick Clawson in Washington. We appreciate your time, and uh, thanks very much indeed for watching this edition of Inside Story. It would be great to hear from you. Any thoughts about what you've been hearing? Just drop us a line, inside story at aljazeera.net. From me, Nick Clark, goodbye for now.